Great stuff. So good evening, guys, and welcome. Welcome to the Real Estate Investing uh, webinar with the Wealth Academy. So let's get right on to business. So guys, my name is Leonardo Pololo. For those of you not familiar, I am an entrepreneur. Uh, I am an investor. I am a cryptocurrency advocate and entrepreneur. Um, I have been investing in, but I bought my first property in 2009 but we'll talk about that as we continue. Um, one thing that I've committed myself to, to actually doing and being, and that is to be a lifelong um, you know, student when it comes to wealth creation, right? That's what I've committed myself to doing, you know, to be a lifelong you know, student when it comes to wealth creation. The world is changing so much. There's so many different ways people can you know, generate income. But what I've realized over the years you know, is that you know, we don't really have an income problem, right? And when we do overcome, you know, maybe initially we do, but when we do overcome the income problem, you know, the pro secondary problem that we do, that we actually have, which is a big one, is not knowing what to do with the income that we generate, right? Um, so that's what we're going to be covering today. So if you are here today and it's your first time, just give me, you know, a thumbs up emoji. And, um, you know, so um, if you are wanting to learn about property investing, let me assure you one thing. It is a lifelong learning, right? I started learning about property when I was doing my second year. This was 2007 when I started learning about property, like, you know, in a very serious way. So um, this webinar will give you, you know, pointers as to why property. Um, if, if that's the only thing we achieve tonight, we would have achieved our goal where if we can give you, you know, sort of like a conviction as to why property investing is you know the cornerstone for wealth creation right and why it has been like that for generations right so the question is mr follow the why property i mean of all the things that exist today you know cryptocurrencies nfts you know there is uh tendering there is uh logistics you know people are having trucks why are you talking about property right so now you know as i'm going to answer that I want us to understand two things, right? Maybe I'm going to cover this more as you continue. It, when it comes to property, you've got two people. You've got investors and you've got entrepreneurs in the property space. Those are two different people, right? Um, and um, especially, you know, also in other, in, um, in other sectors like cryptocurrencies, you've got investors and you've got entrepreneurs, right? So myself, I'm both an investor and an entrepreneur in both cryptocurrencies and property. Can you believe it? So now over the last, you know, um, you know, thousands of years, property has been the cornerstone for wealth creation. Wars have been fought over property, right? Uh, you know, things have happened in the name of property. Why? Because property is a cornerstone for wealth creation. You know, that is why it's called real estate. It's actually coming from royal estate, right? It's this, it's the, it used to be something that belongs only to kings, right? That's why it's called real estate. So 90% of all the, you know, of all the, 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 the millionaires over the last, you know, few thousands of years, you realize that, you know, these people actually became millionaires and billionaires through property, right? And even those that become, you know, rich in other sectors, guess what they do? They basically take their money and invest it into property. Why? They understand that property is the cornerstone for wealth creation. Property is the biggest asset class in the world. It's worth over $260 trillion. In South Africa, it's worth over $6 trillion, $6 trillion rent, right? Ask yourself, how many people actually do have a stake in that $6 trillion, right? And over and above that, it's still going to grow. If you look at what the UN is estimating, they're saying that by the year 2050, more than half of the world population will be living in urban areas for medical facilities, for, uh, you know, for work, you know, related activities, you know, for educational facilities. So it only makes sense for people to continue to urbanize. And as they do so, guess what's going to happen? Their demand for property will continue to rise. If you look at the population stats over the last few years, you realize it's been doing one thing, and that is it's been going up. So whether it's in recession, whether it's the pandemic, people still need to stay in a property. So that's why property, you know, remains very resilient, irrespective of what we actually encounter as human beings, right? So let's talk about some of the few benefits of investing in property. Again, guys, 
There is no way I can exhaust everything that there is to say in this one setting. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to cover as much as we can. Now, property is a catalyst for economic growth. Every government in the world, world knows this. And what does this mean? This means that, you know, whenever the, the economy is hitting a slump, you know, it's slow in terms of, you know, it's, it's a bit sluggish. You know, we've hit a downturn and, you know, the governments and, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the industry, they actually want to stimulate the economy. The number one industry they look to is what? Is real estate. Why? Because if there's activity in real estate in terms of development of real estate, it affects every other, you know, sector. It affects manufacturing. It affects mining. It affects, you know, all sorts of different sectors, which, you know, employ people in large numbers. So one sector that the government really wants to stimulate all the time is actually real estate, right? Which means the government is then forced through the you know, tax authorities and so forth to partner with people who are entrepreneurs in this particular space, right? So they partner with entrepreneurs and they partner with certain type of investors, right? So, so that's, one, that's one thing, right? And it's a catalyst for economic growth. As a result, your banks, your government, everybody wants to see it grow and thrive. Number two, you know, um, unlike most assets, real estate gives you cash flow, right? It's, it's, it, it doesn't just appreciate in value, but it actually gives you cash flow. And that's the type of properties you want to be investing in. The one that I actually going to give you what? Cash flow. And the other amazing um, you know, advantage is actually what is called um, you know, tax benefits. And there's so many tax benefits when it comes to real estate investing. Whether you are renovating inner cities, whether you're actually building new developments, or whether you're actually buying new developments and basically renting them out, right? So if you look at it this way, now, if the government wants to stimulate this economy, right, and they want to do so through real estate, you know, there's so many different ways they're going to do it. But let's talk about this particular one. So you've got a developer that says, I'm willing as an entrepreneur, you know, to put my money, my capital at, at, at stake and basically develop some, some townhouses or, you know, apartment blocks or whatever the case is, right? So the government incentivizes, incentivizes this person who is called a developer. Now, the next person, you know, the developer is going to build these thousands of houses. You know, not everybody can afford to buy a home or not everybody wants to buy a home, right? People want to uh, maybe rent or whatever the case is, you know, homes that are affordable and so forth. Now, the next person that needs to be incentivized is the buy to let investor, right? The buy to let investor says, okay, it's fine. You know, I understand all the benefits there is to investing in property. I am willing to buy a townhouse and rent it out, you know, to tenants, right? Because I understand that my tenants will be for my bond. They, you know, um, my property will appreciate in value for myself. I will get equity from that, you know, that I can use to do whatever that I want to do and so forth. But here's the thing, right? So the government says through uh, the tax authorities, there is a section called Section 13 Sex in the Income Tax Act, which says if you own, we can spend an hour just talking about this one. But you, you know, if you own at least five units, brand new, that you bought from a developer, right? And, um, and you are renting them out, it's not for your own primary business. You know, I mean, uh, it's not for your primary use or your primary residence. You're renting them out, you're running a business, you know? And um, that, that's one tick. And they're all in one entity. Then Sarah says, you know what? If it costs you, maybe let me see if I can write here. Um, so that I can uh, try and, and, and explain this, this. So let's say you buy a townhouse for 800,000, right? You buy a townhouse and you buy it for 800,000. Now, in, that's the price, but then that price includes the price for the land it's built on. It also includes the improvements, which is the, you know, the superstructure, right? It's the, 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 the building of the actual, the bricks and mortar, so to speak. So you'll find that in that 800,000, they might allow for, let's say, 200,000 for the land. And the remaining 600,000, let's say now that's for the improvements, right? 600,000. Now, what Sara says is that, you know, out of this amount for the improvements, right? Now, you can, you can actually get a deduction of up to 55%. You can get a tax deduction from your income tax of up to 55%, okay? Now, what does this simply mean? 
This means that over a 20 year period, you've got 600, you've got, let's say whatever, um, um, 50, whatever 55%, let's say for, for argument's sake, 55% um, of that, let's just say 350,000 or 320,000 rand, right? So now Sar says, so, you know, you can then deduct, you've got a tax, let's call it a tax credit of 320,000, whatever the amount is. That is spread over a period of 20 years, right? So whatever tax, like, whatever tax you, your, your income tax you incur in that particular year, you've got an amount to offset it against every single year, which means you could then easily build, you know, your property portfolio tax-free, you understand? So this is one of the major benefits that most people are not aware of, right? So, and, and there's just so many. This is just one called the section 13 sex. And over and above that, you buy an asset that's appreciating in value. And I'm going to give an example of a property that, you know, that I bought that's appreciating in value even before I actually start paying my bond. So we're going to talk about that. And also, if you go to the bank right now and you say, bank, your shares have been doing so well. I love you so much. I've been so faithful to you, bank, for 20 years. You know, I basically want to borrow money from you so that I can buy your shares. Guess what the bank is going to do? They're going to say, nah, nah, you know, we ain't doing that, right? If you go to the bank, you say you want to uh, borrow money, you want to actually start a business, guess what's going to happen? Chances are you're not going to get that money, right? But the minute you say you want to buy property, you want to invest in property, the banks listen up. Why? They understand the benefits of investing in real estate and they understand the shortage that comes with real estate. And over and above that, they actually have a mandate, you know, to actually assist and, you know, and give out loans, right? So this is a very, very important to understand. Over and above that, this is how money gets created in the economy. That's how money gets, you know, because when you go there to borrow this 1 million rent to buy a property, it doesn't mean the bank is going to take from somebody else's money and give you that 1 million rent to go and buy the property. No, because of what is called, um, you know, fractional reserve banking system, they basically create the 1 million or you know, a portion thereof, maybe 90% of that or 95% of that, depending on what the reserve requirement is for that particular time. So they will, you know, they will, they will then, you know, create this money. Now this money is now added onto, you know, onto the economy, right? So it causes the economy to grow. So, you know, real estate is very, very important because of that. So that is why it's one asset that you can use other people's money, other people's money to get involved, which is, it can be a bank, it can be private investors. You know, people know of only the five banks. There's about 60 banks registered in South Africa today. Most of them, they're not mainstream. You're not going to see them, you know, but these are the, you know, these are just some of the things that you will get access to with what I'm going to talk about at the end of the session. So it is an inflation hedge. It does beat inflation, unlike money sitting in a bank or, um, or some any other fiat-based investment, you know, um, it does beat inflation, right? So, and over and above that, it's one asset that you can basically leave as a legacy for generations to come. You know, I know of a trust in the US, um, sorry, in the UK, this is a 400 year old family trust, you know, and it's been used to basically uh, pass wealth from generation to generation. You know, we've not been able to do that because of so many different reasons. Now, because of real estate and the tools which we're gonna share today, we can be able to do that to make sure that our great grandkids never have to start from zero like some of us did, right? So now, one thing that I realized between, you know, you basically got three clusters of people in the world, you know, in the main. You've got rich people, you've got the middle class, and you've got poor people. In the main, most of all of these people have some form of income, no matter how small, no matter how big, right? But what differentiates them over time is what they do with the money, right? So they've got a source of income, whether it is a job, whether it is a network marketing opportunity, whether it is a small business, well, it doesn't matter what the income is, where the income is coming from, whether they are trading forex, the trading cryptocurrencies, but they've got a form of income. But the question is, once money comes into your possession as income, what does it do? What direction does it take? This is where the rich, the poor, and the middle class get separated, right? So let's start with, you know, uh, with, with the poor, right? So now money comes in from the job, Right. So let's say, you know, it, it's a job, 
or it's a small business there or whatever the case is, right? So what happens is that the money that comes in, it goes through this way. This is what their financial statement look like, right? Sorry about that. So that's what their financial statement look like, okay? Money comes in, they pay rent, pay food, transport, and that's it. Money is gone, right? And they repeat the cycle all over again, right? So there's so many things they can do. They can basically increase their income, but what normally happens? Most of us who basically come from poverty, when we increase our income, guess what happens? We also increase our expenses. We also increase and add liabilities, right? We move from poor and we, we jump straight into the middle class and guess what happens? We increase our liability. So which, you know, takes us, you know, to the middle class. The middle class income looks like this. Money comes in, um, you know, it's, it's money coming from, you know, uh, the business, you know, network marketing, cryptocurrency trading, forex trading, whatever they're doing, all their professionals, their doctors, their accountants, you know, but this is what happens, right? So the money comes in and it goes and takes care of their liabilities and their expenses and the money is gone, okay? And the cycle repeats. Now, most of the time, this is because of education, but miseducation. Now, let, let me explain what I mean by that. When we talk about miseducation, now we are taught that your primary home is an asset, right? And your, 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 your car is an asset, right? Now, let's, let's pass a myth right there, right? Now, the classical definition of, you know, or the rich people's definition of an asset is something that generates income, that puts income in your pocket, right? That's what they call an income. And have you noticed that whatever is an asset today can become a liability tomorrow, and whatever the liability today can become an asset tomorrow, you know, so these things change. It depends on the word cash flow, right? Depending on how the, you know, the, the cash is flowing from, you know, um, that particular asset. So as long as you are taking care of it and paying man, money every single month, it's basically a liability, right? And it doesn't make it wrong. It just simply says that we need to understand it correctly labeled so that we can find ways to finance it just like the rich do, okay? So now, of course, rich people stay in mansions, you know, they do drive expensive cars and so forth, but how do they finance those things? That's where things get to be, to be a little bit different, right? So what these guys do is, you know, they get an income from their job, from their business, and what they do is that, you know, as the money comes in, it goes straight into the asset column. What does it do here? It basically, you know, builds an asset portfolio, right? If you reach, uh, reach, reach that poor debt of which you are fans of at the Wealth Academy, you know, he says one thing, he says the rich don't work for money. That's number one, you know, of, um, you know, rich debt's rule. The rich don't work for money. They work for what? They work for assets. Assets which then, you know, will generate income. And then that income then takes care of the expenses and the liabilities and so forth. It does not mean these, these people live below their means. They don't. They just find a way to finance their means, okay? Not to live below their means, right? So this is basically the crux of the matter. This is what differentiates, you know, rich people from poor people. And over and above that, there's so many different asset classes, you know, where people can be able to generate income. I mean, you can start a business, right? Um, there's also paper assets. There's also commodities, including cryptocurrencies. And there's also real estate. Now, what makes real estate different? One, you can buy it with other people's money. And number two, um, you know, there's so many tax benefits that come from real estate. And number three, it gives you cash flow, right? All the benefits that we've already outlined, you know, that that what makes real estate to be different. Now, if you want to win in real estate, you cannot do it alone. It does not matter how brilliant you are. It's not possible, right? One uh, a guy who is a mentor to, my, to me once said, you know, there's never enough time in one lifetime to learn everything that there is to learn, right? You can know a little bit about everything, but the easiest way is to build the power team around you, people that you can work with, people who specialize in different things, you know, um, you know, that then can help you to basically build your real estate portfolio, right? So the people we are talking about, the primary people that you really have to have in your team, you know, you need to have real estate agents or what we commonly call property strategies because real estate agents are not made the same. 
I was a real estate agent. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Real estate agents are not made the same. Some are just concerned about, you know, making the commission. They will tell you, you know, buy the property in your name, you know, no, do this and it doesn't matter. And like, they will give all sorts of advice, which might not necessarily be the best advice as far as understanding your long-term objective about building your real estate portfolio. So what you want, you want people who are property investors themselves, right? And those are your property strategies, right? You need conveyancers. You know, you, there's a deal that you want to sign. You need someone to have a look at the, you want to buy a property. What is that, the title deed says? Are there any onerous conditions of the title deed which might inhibit you from what you want to do with the property? You know, and how do you structure, you know, an offer to purchase or an agreement of sale? You know, all those sorts of things. That's where you need a conveyancer. Conveyancer is a specialized attorney who specializes in property law. That's the only thing they do, right? You need estate planners, right? People that will help you, you know, to build your power structure, your wealth preservation and protection structure, which we, we, might, we might touch on as we continue. You need, you know, um, your built professionals, right? Your quality surveyors, civil engineers, you know, contractors, plumbers, electricians. You need those people to have on dial as a property investor, right? And over and above, you basically need investors and partners. There's just not, it's not possible for you to do every single deal that falls on your lap on your own. You understand? You're gonna need to have partners that you can invest with and tackle deals with so that you make sure that you can get to as many deals as possible in a short space of time. And, you know, you definitely need mentors, people who have walked the road, people who have done so that it can shorten your learning curve, right? Uh, you know, most of us will realize after the third property that we bought in our personal name that we shouldn't have done that, this is the implication, and so forth, right? So you basically need mentors who have done what you want to do so that you can let shorten your learning curve. Now, I'm not going to dwell so much into, you know, uh, but this is just you know, a story on its own about my property journey. But, you know, these are the first two properties we bought together with my wife. This was bought in 2009. This was our, you know, our primary residence. And, um, you know, so this was in East London, guys. And one mistake here is that we basically locked our capital into a primary residence. As a result, we only had 200,000 and so forth, you know, or, 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 or that you could qualify for, which, we were able to buy this one, this report, it was a distressed property. We had to fix it up here and there, you know, but we got it 250,000 rand lower, the market value, right? As they say in property, you don't make money when you sell, you make money when you buy, okay? So mistake that we made, that we made here is that we try to run, you know, to manage the property on our own. You don't do that. You treat it as a business, Get a professional to manage your property portfolio. You know, you don't want to work in your business. You want to work on your business. Those are two different things, right? And I mean, we tried. We bend our fingers real bad, okay? So, uh, you know, I started construction management, like I said. I ended up selling properties because I was so in love with the property, with, the, with property as an asset class. I thought this was going to get me into proximity with the real estate um, you know, um, my favorite asset class and will actually allow me to, you know, to buy more properties fast and build my property portfolio. That did not happen. Okay. That did not happen. So long story short, I sold properties for about seven years of my life. And in that seven years, you know, I've bought and sold properties and so forth. I traded properties and that's something that you can do, but that's not something that I do personally or I encourage. Why? Because there's so many texts uh, you know, you trigger every time you buy and sell, it's a tax event, okay? And, um, you know, so it's a taxable event and over and above that, you never really get to build long-term sustainable wealth in that way. You want to hold on to properties, rent them out, let somebody pay for your bond, you know, give you income and so forth and let the property appreciate in value, you know, um, for yourself. So these are just some of the few deals I've done. This was a redevelopment. This was a house in the township and uh, guys, the township market is so important. You know, it's unfortunate that I don't really uh, like the township market much for so many different reasons, but it's very potent guys. If we can get it right, you can make money. So I bought this property for 120,000 rand. You know, um, I added a third bedroom with an end suite. Uh, I added a garage, boundary wall, you know, um, tiled it, um, you know, throughout new bathroom and so forth. 
I ended up selling the property for 450,000 rand. And guess what? I sold the property even before I could lay one brick. Before I could lay one brick, I had a plate drawn. I sold the property from a plan, okay? You know, that's just some of the, you know, the, the deals that are available, guys, in the, in the township market. So the next deal, and I took capital from a few deals, and I bought this land. This was, again, my primary residence, right? So here, I built, you know, a two-bedroom uh, uh, apartment, open plan kitchen with the bathroom and so forth. The goal was to build a dream home right in front, okay? Now, and that did not happen. I ended up having to sell the property. It was in Blue Otape, magnificent views all the way from Kucha to Summer Strait. It had beautiful views. But, you know, because of we kept on getting robbed and so forth, we ended up selling the property. So, you know, what was the lesson there? You know, you might not necessarily want to start with your primary residence. If you want to build, unless, you know, that's really something that you have to do, you know, then you, it means that you have to, you know, be an entrepreneur and raise your income level so that you can quickly be able to afford other properties as well, right? And some of the deals we have done, I mean, we've got, uh, you know, four, um, we've got Airbnbs here um, in the Port Elizabeth beachfront. And this was a dream of ours. You know, I, I used to say that I can't be born in Port Elizabeth with such a beautiful coastline and never own a property in the coastline of Port Elizabeth, right? And that dream was realized. I mean, we own, um, you know, four units in this, um, uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this building and they're all doing Airbnb. They're doing incredibly well. You know, there's so many things we, can, we could discuss there about the lessons, you know, how I got into those deals. Again, there, you know, I was able to buy at the right time. This was just after, you know, um, uh, lockdowns, right? So I made money on my buy there, right? Those properties have appreciated in just a short space of time. So, and this is the other one in uh, Four Leaf. Uh, you know, we own five properties there that you're renting out. You know, there's, there's a few others that we have done, guys. This is another one in, uh, in Fairview. This is, uh, uh, we bought one piece of land. We built two properties. We sold one and we're renting, you know, the other one. This then brings your cost for the second one that you're renting out down because you basically move the profits, you know, from your, the one that you sold into the one that you're renting out, which then means your return on investment is basically quite high, right? So that's just some of the things that, that deals that we've done. Now, I've then ventured into multi lets because guys, there's so many different ways you can get into property. There's student accommodation, there's multi lets there's townhouses, there's Airbnb. I mean, there is, a, um, there is commercial, in commercial, it's even a wider space, right? Um, you know, there's, uh, <laughs> so my boss is telling me that, you know, I must finish up. Uh, uh, they, 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 they told me that I mustn't take too much time uh, because I, I normally take more than an hour. So, okay, let, moving right along. So guys, here is another very, you know, exciting deal. So let me tell you about this one, right? So we signed the offer to purchase on this particular one. It's in Stellenbosch, right? Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm going to join the Stellenbosch Mafia very soon. So this is in Stellenbosch. We bought it for 2.15 and we signed the offer to pay. This was a, 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 an off-plan development. Um, so we bought it for 2.15. I think we signed it uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, this year, around July or so, something like that, or earlier. Anyway, so the property only got finished, um, you know, um, last week, last week, uh, Wednesday, right? So now when we bought the property, it was valued at 2.15. On completion, the property is valued at 2.295. I've not even paid a cent. I've made an equity of 145,000 rand immediately. I haven't paid nothing. So this is going to be a multi I'm putting four students in there. They're going to pay me, you know, six, six and a half, uh, um, you know, rent uh, per student. We estimate between eight and 12% in that particular, um, you know, position where the property is. So if you look at the, the current price of the property right now, and let's say it, it doesn't escalate by 10 or 12%, it only escalated by, you know, 8%. That's another eight, 183,600 in equity that I would have got. So in a space of what, one and a half year or so, I would have made over 300,000 in equity. Equity that I can withdraw and put it as a deposit on other properties, okay? So, guys, these are just some of the stuff that you will learn, um, you know, from the Wealth Academy. This webinar just to simply, you know, give you awareness. Now, here's another very example. 
One of the things that we teach about is how to, to set your worth structures properly, right? So let's make a few assumptions here, right? And um, so if you buy, if you buy a property, let's say you own, so let's say you own a property and it's paid off, it's in your name, 4 million, right? Woohoo, great stuff. And your, your cars combined, let's say it's available at 2 million. You don't owe anyone, right? You've got other investment properties and they're valued at 6 million, right? And let's say you've got even a life cover. Those are some of the things we'll teach you about why a life cover is very important, right? So let's say you've got a life cover for 10 million rand and you've got other assets, you know, valued at 1 million rand, maybe jewelry or whatever. Let's say your, your total net asset value is 23 million. And all of this thing is in your name. Why? You never knew better. Guess what's going to happen? There's something that is called estate duty tax, where SAR says, you died, you died rich, I want 20% of your money, just because you died rich, okay? So now that is called, you know, estate duty tax. Now, so there is an allowance of 3.5 million for estate duty tax. So if you deduct that, trip, and this is obvious, these are rough numbers, you'd have to refer to an accountant or a lawyer to basically, you know, uh, you know, tell you how these numbers work, but this is just, these are just rough estimates. So they will deduct 3.5 million and on the 19 and a half million, you will then basically pay 20% to SARS, right? That's your estate duty though. So that will be 3.9 million. And then you need to pay someone called an executor who's going to wind up your estate. Your executor is going to charge you, you know, 3.5% um, plus VAT. So that's 4 point something percent, right? Which is another, you know, over 800,000 rand. So in total that you would have given to SARS for nothing would be 4.7. 4.7 million on an estate of this particular size, right? So if you are my friend, I expect you to strive to have more, way more than this, right? So that means if you don't structure your stuff properly, you're gonna pay more to the receiver, okay? So the question is where to, where to from here? Very important, you need to identify your why. Why do you want to build wealth? Right? Why is it important for you? Right? Um, you know, are there other people, you know, why is it important for you to build wealth? And number two, you need to set your, your goals, all right? Because, you know, as much as yes, you can build, you can buy some properties without, um, you know, uh, a, a, an income, but you realize that it's much better with income, right? Way much better with income. So that's why every property guru out there, you know, um, you know, they basically are doing other stuff for them to earn more income. They're selling books, they're doing this, they're doing that. Why? They want to earn, because more income they have, look at Grant Cardone, look at Robert Kiyosaki, the more income they have, the more they can put as deposit on more and more and more property and actually grow their portfolio up to infinity, okay? So now you need to set your income goals, um, you need to create your wealth builder structure. You can consult us for that. Um, we're going to put the, 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 the link to our uh, Telegram channel where you can get hold of us and uh, we can then help you further. Um, Marcia, are you able to put the comment? Yeah, tele Telegram. So we're going to put the Telegram link on the, uh, um, on the comment section where you can um, engage us further for questions and, and, uh, and answers and how to get started. So, but the bottom line, guys, you need to continue learning, right? It's not going to be, you're not going to attend one seminar, one full day seminar, and you know it all, you're ready to make millions, right? So it's going to be a process. But in that process, you basically need someone who's going to hold your hand, right? And this is basically why, you know, <laughs> it's funny because people ask me to create this. People, my friends, ask me to create this. Why? Because I was sharing information and, and they were saying, and because I was not doing it as a business, you know, uh, you know, I can't hold your hand. You know, I hold people's hand, yes, but I can't do it to a lot of people, right? So they said, look, we've been charging ridiculous amounts of money for far less information, right? And, you know, could you please do this for us and make sure that, you know, you create a system where we become your customers and you can coach us on how to build wealth with property. And that's why the Wealth, Economy, the wealth Academy is basically here today. So we do this in, in, in different ways. We've got membership structures. Um, we'll communicate the benefits again in the, on, on Telegram. 
Yeah, but you know, it, it's, it basically means that, you know, you get access to our academy coaches. Right now you are seeing me talk. I'm not the only one at the Wealth Academy. I've got people who specialize in auctions. You know, we've got wealth coaches who specialize in multi less student accommodation. You know, so we've got different people who will be able to do whatever, you know, um, journey you've chosen, you know, there is people who will be able to, to coach you, right? So um, at the Wealth Academy, you know, we've got these uh, Wealth Academy coaches that will then help you. And over and above that, you know, we've got the membership structure, which then gives you access to certain information, certain training, certain courses, and so forth, right? So this is basically the smallest, the starter plan. Um, you can either pay monthly or you can pay annually. Uh, and then there's a pro investor, obviously, with far more, with much more, uh, you know, benefits. You even get, you know, discounts on setting up your trust um, and uh, your structure, in fact. And you've got the mogul investor. And that is it, guys. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, unfortunately, my boss says time's up. So meet us on the, on the Telegram group and let us continue this session on the Telegram group. The, the session, the link is on the, on the comment section. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Love you all, stay blessed. Above all, let's continue to learn. Let's continue to create wealth. Cheers.